And uh, mm. the challenge is to do something that we need to look at very carefully. Let's turn to Psalm 119. Again, the first few verses are very, very <coughs> important where we said, blessed are those who seek him with the whole heart. I think that is the key, you see? And, and the challenge is to seek the Lord. <coughs> Right? And then whole heart. This is the object, God. This is how we do it. Right? This is absolutely important because a lot of times we don't realize what we need to do. And, and, and I'm going to illustrate this very clearly. Uh, very carefully uh, from Psalm 27 you will, <coughs> you will see how this works out okay well let's, let's take a look at Psalm let's look at Psalm 27 and you'll see this uh, very very clearly <coughs> right and so the, we have a Psalm of David and we see this Okay. So in the Lord, <clears throat> he says, he is my light. This is my salvation. Good, fair statement. My light, uh, salvation. The Lord is also strength of my life. <clears throat> right? So we see this very, very clearly. Strength. Of my life. So I don't need to fear anything. Strength, salvation, light. Okay? So what about the wicked? Don't worry too much about them. Right? And then did <clears throat> two and three. So there is his confidence. Verse 3. Now, that sounds good. And then he begins to muse and think about this. You know what he wants to seek? One thing I have desired the Lord that I will seek. Okay, so what does he want to seek? Watch this very carefully. It says, one he wants to be in the house of the Lord. Okay, so that sounds good. Uh, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Uh, I want to behold the beauty of the Lord. I want to inquire in this temple and everything else. Okay, and... Uh, so verse 7, he says, When I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me and answer me. <coughs> what was God's reply to David? Psalm 27. You know what God said? Seek my face. See, sometimes we get cut, we really get caught up with all a lot of activities. But the activities in themselves can become distracting. What God wants is for us to seek Him, not things. You see, because at the end of the day, if I have only knowledge, but I don't have God, I've missed the points. Really, I've really missed the point. I have two student pastors uh, right now in, from Myanmar. <clears throat> and uh, they've come over to Singapore to train as pastors. Okay? Both of them have what we call 
a master's degree in divinity. Right? So they've gone through Bible school four years, they've gone to Bible school for another three years, so they've got seven years of background in theological studies. What's the knowledge of the Word of God like? Nothing impressive at all. Within the first month of their training, they begin to realize we have to really unlearn and relearn things. They don't know how to seek God's face. Were the seven years wasted? Yes, no. But neither are they ready. So we have a person there. Um, this, where, this place is called Manipur in, in India. <clears throat> so last year, he said to me, Pastor, uh, I would like to ask, can we join your church? Create a Bethany church over in Manipur. Mizoram. I say, okay, well, let's come for the pastoral conference, which is held uh, two weeks ago. At the end of the conference, he said, Pastor, I, can I change my mind? I also have a master's degree. But you know what? I have the faintest idea how to found a church. Now, that's serious. So he says, can I ask instead to train in Singapore? So I came back to the church session and they said, yes, train over in Singapore. So I have effectively three young men, all with suitable academic qualifications, but they have no idea what God's Word is all about. That's what we see here. You see, sometimes, you know, we talk about being in a Bible school, and be this and that. What does it tell you? Next to nothing. You see, I train pastors. I'm a pastor of pastors. I teach pastors. I teach missionaries. It's only when you get down to where they are that you begin to realize the weaknesses that are actually there. Very few know how to seek God's face. The Lord's word, through all the things, the Lord is my light, He is my salvation, He is my strength. Nice words. I want to be in the Lord's house. I want to behold His beauty. I want to inquire. Nice ambition. One problem. Where is God? So God said to him, Seek my face. Straight away, he knew where he was wrong. So he changed. And so he said, Okay, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Your face. So there I will seek. Now that is what we need. 27 and verse 8. And so the psalmist, teach me your way. There we go. Same phrase in Psalm 109. Teach me your way. Now we have to deal with this quite a bit because if we don't deal with these things here, what is battle seeking to do? It must not be, oh, we want a bigger church. Don't. Focus. Seek God. It is so easy to be caught up with this activity, that duty, do this, do that. And we end up missing the point. It's not activity. It is not service. It's not money. It's not giving. It's not being in a choir. It is seeking God Himself. 
That is what it's all about. You see, and if we have this thing that is missing, we miss it quite a bit. Right? And otherwise, if we don't be careful, we don't know how to speak about the Lord. We don't know how to encourage people to seek the Lord because we ourselves are not seeking the Lord. So we come to church, what passes off as fellowship is actually not fellowship. Be careful. Gossip can be passed off as fellowship. And we're not careful. We sin in fellowship. Don't let that happen. Our focus must be, you know, I discovered this about God. I've learned this about God. Can I share that with you? If our focus can, to be, can be the cultivation of this, then our going to church will be very meaningful. Otherwise, what is it all about? I hope you want to understand this. The Lord's desire are not the peripheral, the, the peripheral things, but God Himself. See, the Pharisees are so caught up, we must be righteous, we cannot do it on a Sabbath day, we cannot do this, we cannot do that. They're so fussy about the laws that they're supposed to keep. They missed the point. And it's true. We can be so fussy about the things we do, we miss the point of it all. What is the point? Seek my face. So when I read the Word of God, what am I looking for? The face of God. Not just knowledge. Not memorize Bible verses. Not, not that they're not important. But if I miss the point about seeking God personally, I really have missed the point of it all. Right? What am I here for? I mean, look, look at what is it all about over here. What is my role in, in uh, battle over the years? And I ask myself, what are some of my roles constantly? Okay, so I share with you some of these things here which you know. Okay, one. <clears throat> to encourage you to seek God's face, obviously. Priority number one points you to God all the time, consistently, 24 years. How? His word. That's why you don't get involved in your kitchen, your choir. See, all these things are peripheral. Don't make a big deal out of it. This is where the thing really is. Any system can change, not a problem. Any team can be there, not a problem. That is not my focus. If it's there, it's there. If it's not there, it's not there. So what? But this is vital. I don't deviate from that purpose. Why do we need to do what we need to do? And if there are unsuitable people in the ministry, they've got to be taken out. I've got to do that. And I will do that. If there are sins that need to be addressed, you know me, I will address it. I'm not here to be popular. I'm not here long enough, often enough, to desire any of these things. I don't ask for anything at all. Never did, never will. Because my purpose, my focus is not anything except to help you seek God's face. So why come here every time? Why? What do I do to tell you how I go about it? With joy, 
with energy, with diligence, with strength, with hope, with faith. Let's do it. Can it be done? Yes, consistently. 24 years of ministry here. And if you don't cut it, you don't cut it. Right? And I'll show you how you can cut it. And it can be done. Right? I continue to monitor, continue to help Chris, continue to strengthen him, encourage him. He has got much more to go before he finds full strength, wisdom, power from God. My purpose, my focus is seek God's face. Right? Until he becomes light, salvation and strength. See, you anchored it down completely. That's what we do. So you try it. If there is anything that I can do to encourage you, you know what, I will do it. If there's anything that I can say that is of no particular use to anybody, commends, for example, I would not say a word. Why should I? There's no point saying anything that is unwholesome, that is useless, that is not effective. What's the point? Right? You see, my whole purpose is to seek God because I know the things that will hinder me from seeking God. My sins will hinder me from seeking God. And anything that will, that will cause me, will hinder me, I remove them. So that my path is going to be straight. Teach me your way. What's your way? I walk here. Wrong way, change. Walk. That's the only way. For those of us of the older generation, what is our role? We got to teach the youngsters. This is the way to go. We leave behind them, for them, a legacy of faith, of seeking God, of His Word, particularly. Right? So this is what we do. Everywhere we go, we want to say, this is how we do it. We do it His way, not our way. That's what we do. Right? And we keep trying and trying all the time. Because soon, life will pass. And we pass our prime if we're not careful. We're God. Right? Auntie Julia passed away not so long ago. Now why we know she's old, she's not very literate, sometimes she speaks very loudly, and then we get irritated. But Auntie Julia left a legacy for Bethel. See? In her will, she left something for Bethel. Her heart meant it for battle. There we go. So what's the point of saying all sorts of funny things? Somebody left something behind. Let's thank God. Let's praise God. The only other comment is useless. Right? You see what I mean by see God? Because if I see God in His light, I will not walk in darkness. If I see God and His strength, I will not be weak. If I see salvation, then I am delivered from sin. That is what we mean by seeking God. Let's orientate ourselves. Let's speak about God. Let's speak about His light, His strength, His confidence, instead of making remarks about anything and everything. For what? they will hurt our own personal, spiritual goal. Our souls will be damaged. Don't let it happen. 
But if everyone speaks of the Lord, encouraging people, lifting up each other in prayer, the whole church becomes alive with joy, with love, with power. His presence is in our midst. Otherwise, God is outside. He cannot be part of sin. He cannot be part of darkness. We've got to give up our ways because they are weak, inferior, and sinful. Right? Now, this is absolutely important. Let's do it. Right? We are in the process of developing another group of leaders to come up. Right? We need the youngsters. We need their youth. We need their strength. We need their joy. We need the things that they can give. What about me? Ask yourself seriously. If I am not the one called and chosen, I am going to support those who are. 100%. No reservation. No buts. It could be anybody. This is our part. This is our role. Let me support that person. See, that's how we walk with God. That's how we seek God's face. It's so important. Right? That's how God wants us to function as a church. So this is something... So I, I, we have a, young, a lot of youngsters coming in. Right? They have my age. I'm there to support them. I'm there to work with them, help them. I see them in the morning, I see them at night, I see them every afternoon. My purpose, go for it. And we have a whole church that says, we are there for them, go ahead. That's how they are, that's how they are encouraged. So when they were commissioned as student pastors, they were given a suit. Not from the church, from the session members, from the leaders. This is not church money. We don't have to use church funds. Each one given a nice suit, my tailor. So you don't get something, okay, not so good. Same tailor. They were given a tech hoyer watch. Again, from the church leaders, not from the church funds. Department after department after department all said, we're going to do something for them to encourage them. You see, it's not church funds. Church funds are easy to use because it's not their personal money. So they all give. Why not preparing them for ordination? So I said, Chris, come on over. So we change it from Easter time because he's going to be here for Easter for the anniversary instead. Not church funds, individual. He's coming over. We're happy for that because they respect him. He cares for them. Good and mutual. See, we seek God. Mistakes are made along the way, of course. But we're there to support them. This is how we seek God's face. One day, they will take over. I live for that day. I'm not going to hold them back. I'm not going to put them down. I want to be empowered too. I want them to go beyond me. I want them to be even greater in every sense of the word as God enables them and empowers them. My joy would to see them stand out. Anytime, anywhere. They already stand out in India. They are better than the pastors we have there. They already stand out in Myanmar. They are better than those with master's degrees and doctor's degrees. And this is just a start. Want them to be able one day to open up many other books. They can't do it right now. 
the knowledge, the wisdom, the skill is not there yet. But you know, my part is not to put them down, to speak against them, but to help them every way I can. Will they one day eclipse me? May that be the case. My joy. That's how it is. That's how it works. I hope you understand this. I, am I afraid that they'll be better than me? No. Am I afraid they'll be smarter than me? No. Am I afraid that they'll have better ministry than me? No. I've, done, I've been there, done that. It's time for me, where I can, to back off. Let them be there. But of course, we've been there, done that. So we guide, we help, we encourage, we love, we pray for. We do everything we can just to encourage and strengthen them. That's what we need to do. That's what we can do for everyone in the younger ones. The younger ones misbehave, help them. They make mistakes, guide them. Right? But we help them. We do it with love. We do it with joy. We tell them, seek my face. But if they are refusing to, to listen, that's a different story. But we help them. That's how we practice it as a church. We must. If we don't, we fail them. And that's what we don't want to do. We must do everything we can. First, we seek God's face. As you see the Lord, as you see His light, as you see His salvation, as you see His strength, as you see the confidence, as you seek the Lord's face, you'll find that your own life will change. Because if I have seen the Lord's face, this is what James tells us, from a fountain, you cannot have bitter water and sweet water at the same time. It's either good or it's bad. You cannot have both good and bad. Let's change. Let's do whatever we can for the better. If we can do this, Bethel will be a far stronger church than you imagine. Right? Now this is something that we need to look at very carefully. So there may come a time when you have to think, Okay, every Sunday the car park full. What's the answer? What if we have a multi story car park? It's going to cost you $5 million. You dare to do that? Where's the $5 million? You don't have the $5 million. Oh, Bethany. Oh, that's not how it works. There must be that faith, there must be that love, there must be the desire to say, you know what, we can do this. But no point building a multi-story car park if it's only on Sundays. Right? Obviously, we've got to make plans. There must be others who can be encouraged to serve the Lord together with Pastor Chris. Right? Now he's going to He's, he's still young. But in a matter of time before he will hit, he will go into his 40s. And then 50s. It takes years to groom somebody. We want people to say, you know, let's support that person. We need people. But we need people whose lives are stable, faith stable, focus strong to serve the Lord. Otherwise, Nothing but problems. We have a team of people. We don't have problems. We have a thousand people at, at Shangri-La when we meet. We don't have problems like that. Our focus is the same. We seek God's face. And we see His light, His salvation, His strength, His beauty, His love. And it flows from us outwards to other people. That's what it should be. Can we do it? Yes. And so the challenge is to cultivate it first 
and then next to practice it. That's why point seven and eight. We don't cultivate it. You can't practice it consistently. You will falter and fail. What do I need to cultivate? Where we go? To be the one. Add to that faith. Virtue, knowledge, self-control, godliness, brotherly kindness, love. If these things keep growing in us, then we know that we are not blind. That's how it should be. Right? Now, this is something that is absolutely important for us. So we need to cultivate and we need to practice. Now, if we don't have both, we're sunk. The next time you go to town and you see CP, it's not city parking. It is cultivate and practice. So every time you go to town and you see a CP, remember, I've got to cultivate and I've got to practice. Then we can really grow a faith and a life that God can truly use. That is absolutely important. Right? What can we do to improve ourselves in every way? It begins with, let me seek God's face. Right? Whatever we need to do. If we can do that, it's going to help us a great, great deal. Are there any questions you want to ask along the way? Two things, uh, all right? Cultivation and practice. All right, questions you want to raise, I'll be happy to take them up with you. Okay? This is absolutely important. Now let's talk about practice a little bit so that we can look at this very carefully. What is this thing we call practice? And I want to encourage you to do this. This is absolutely important. How to have this practice. Okay? But one, it begins with hiding the Lord's word in our hearts. So I, I carry this, this is my, my notebook. My, some people carry an electronic notebook. I don't, I write. And I'll tell you why I write. Because when I write, it makes me conscious of the word I write. So I put down here, uh, okay, Isaiah 29, 19. Now you're not familiar with the text. But this is in preparation for next year's family camp in March where I'll be talking about Isaiah further. When do I start preparing? Now. This is April. This is March next year, 2019. What do I do? I start memorizing the Lord's Word first. So when people go to Beth Bethany, the family camp, our family camp is about 500 people. It's about five times as large as here. <clears throat> and and it, we book the half the hotel. And we plan every detail for months. Guess who's leading the family camp? All our session members. They lead. Every detail they go into. We have to. Every little nitty-gritty detail we look into, from customs, to finance, to sponsorship, to programs, you name it, we cultivate, we practice over the years. So, we hide. Right? So this is what I do. Memorize the Lord's Word. Do I still memorize the Lord's Word? Yes. Not for a Sunday school contest. See, most of us stopped memorizing the Lord's word a long time ago. The psalmist says, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. You know why we sin? Because the word of God is not there to guard us from sin. But if this word of God is in my heart, I will not sin so easily. 
practice. I still memorize the Lord's Word all the time. My goal, my target right now is the example of Jonathan Go Forth. He read the scriptures 73 times. Wow. Take my head off to him. Right? How many times have I read the Lord's Word? Many times, but not 73. That's pretty amazing. I want to continue to do it. I hide the Lord's Word in my heart. Eyes to see. I want to read. I want to see. Make the effort. I cannot memorize passages and memorize one verse. If I cannot memorize one verse, half the verse. But the point of it all, the truth of God's word must become a part of my life. Okay? Memorize what? How do I come to worship? Psalm 100. Right? How shall I enter into the house of the Lord? Praise. You enter into the house of the Lord with praise on your heart, on your, the lips, the singing will just take on a different meaning. That's what we do at Bethany. So when you hear them sing, it's like the entire church is a choir. Why? Because we bear in mind Psalm 100. Right? We enter into His courts with thanksgiving. Into his gates, praise. That's how we do it. So, see, we memorize the Lord's word, we practice it, we worship, it's there. And every Sunday is full of joy. And I've been doing this for 45 years. There hasn't been a Sunday where we are not singing out of our hearts. Whatever it takes. Right? In a matter of giving, Deuteronomy 15 comes to mind. When you want to help, open your hand wide. Don't grip. Give. So when we have our Shangri-La lunches three times a year, okay, a hundred tables, 15% of that is given. Right? Why? It's natural. We want to give. Nobody says, wow, so expensive. I drive a nice car. I live in a nice house. And I say, wow, so expensive. We have sin. See? Our heart's attitude, our sins will convict our hearts. How dare we say that? This is for the Lord's work. Wow, very costly. What's wrong with us? Look at what the Lord has blessed us with. And we think in terms of dollars and cents. You've got to be kidding. It's just so wrong. You see, how the Word of God comes into our life and we practice it. Right? How do we serve? Example, Moses, faithfully. Paul, steadfastly. Their examples come to mind. You know what? I want to be that as well. I want to serve with all the strength I have. Well, you know I've been coughing for a little while. Actually, I've been nursing this cough for a few months now. Can't get down, can't solve it. One big problem. I don't stop teaching. One conference I teach in Myanmar morning till evening. Here, morning, evening, afternoon, teach, coach the others. I don't get a chance to rest the voice. Would I still do it? Yes. I would rather use my voice, be tired out for the Lord, than just sit and do nothing. Practice. Right? 
So there is a Bible text for every single thing we do in life. Everything, and I mean it. Any and everything that is with reference to the Lord, to His work, to ministry, to people, there is a Bible text there to guide us, to help us. And I am going to memorize it and then put it into practice. That's the best way to go. I hope you understand what I'm trying to get at. So I'm not just teaching it to you. I'm trying to live it out in my life. I think that is something that we need to look at very, very carefully. Right? So, there we go. Right? And then we talk about praying. You know, we begin to realize to our horror, we're actually lacking in so many areas. And we go on further, we're lacking so many. Have we finished studying 119? No. We've only taken one theme. Last year was, your word I have hidden in my heart. Guess what? We didn't do it. This year, we talk about the love of the Lord. What will we study next year? It'd be good to figure out. But you know what? We have not kept the word in our heart. Neither have we learned to love the Lord's word. You know, life goes on. We will study again. What do we need to do? Well, prayers are so important. Most of us pray very tired prayers. Most of our prayers are me prayers. Me, my family, mine. What kind of prayers are these? There are people. This is one, one of the persons who right now, um, she's driving over, she's from Sydney, drives over in, uh, in New Zealand with her family, and she wrote to me and he says, uh, can you pray for me? This morning, I'm driving from here to there. It's going to be four hours of driving. Can you pray for me? I wrote back and I said, yes. But let me know with the end of this journey. Can it happen? Well, I tell you why it's so important. One of our church members, family member, okay, medical doctor, went over to Australia to drive, holiday, accident, today, neck down, paralyzed. Can it happen? We take nothing for granted. We pray because we know. How do we pray? Psalm 121. Right? The Lord as our keeper. You see what I'm trying to say? There is a tax for every single situation in life. First, we understand it, memorize it. Next, we practice it. Well, I will pray. I will do my part in praying. Guiding, teaching, whatever. Let me practice it. Otherwise, what have I got? Nothing. You see, most of us don't really feel the sense of interconnectedness in here to each other, except to a small group. Okay, my family, some friends, one click. Family, some friends, another click. And this is all wrong. We are the body of Christ. We are interconnected with each other in the body of Christ. And we are not practicing it. We sin against the body of Christ and against our own soul. That is our problem. Right? Again here, we are told, we are His body. Ephesians, Corinthians, you cannot say, the hand cannot say to the foot, you're not part of the body. You can't. 
we, we need to look at some of these things very, very carefully and say we need to look at some of these things here. We, we need to look at it very, very carefully and, and, and work at it. Right? I, I hope you understand what we're trying to get at. Let's practice this. Let's hide the Lord's word, last year's team, learn to love the Lord and put it into practice every single day. And then the whole church will be a very different place. People are just... Look, we read the book of Acts. One heart, one soul. Right? This is what we are trying to do. Right now, I am doing a special series about missions focus. You know, it, I write to my church people Monday to Friday. Besides the daily writing. So every day, there are two parts which will go out to our church members. Hundreds of them are on that website, on the, on the receiving end. Study the Lord's Word together with me. See, that's how we keep connectedness. So I may not be here, but whatever time I have, whatever time I have here to teach, I will. Whatever little time I have, I will use it to minister to people in India, to Myanmar, to Singapore, in Australia, anywhere else. Connectedness. And together, we are one. That's what we need. That's what we need to have. Is it possible? Yes. Right? Now, this is something that we need to consider very, very, very carefully. How can we develop this? So as we come to a close of this Bible camp here, your word talking about how we love the Lord's Word, we begin with, first, let us acquire this love. Next, take it up to the next level. Let it be something that flows from our hearts. Three, let's make sure that it is a love that has got wisdom, discernment, not compromise. One, two, three. One more level to go tonight. And that's what we need to do. And we need this kind of love for the Lord and His Word. If I really love the Lord and His Word, you know what I will do automatically? I will hide it in my heart. If I really mean what I say, it will be something I practice. <coughs> Obviously. And you know what? I want to spread this to other people. And I want to encourage you, everyone. I want to make, make a list of people you want to share the Word of God with. <coughs> make a list. Those who are not able to come to camp, talk to them. Can I tell you what we learned? This is what we learned. One, two, three, four. <coughs> make a list. Help them. Share with them things that you have learned. Don't just come to church, have worship, have lunch, go home. Totally unconnected. The moment we see this kind of disconnectedness or unconnectedness, we straight away don't understand what it means to be part of the church. We fail automatically. What's my role? And I think it's very important for us. For those of our church people who are medical doctors, whichever hospital they are in, all I need to do is to tell them, so-and-so is coming into the hospital, can you look after the person? You can be very sure they'll be there. Don't have to ask a second time. It's a part of us. Right? That's how we are connected. So there are people who will say, <coughs> Pastor, this is the gift. You, you need more. Please let me know. And I never ask. Never need. All these years, never needed. Always oversubscribe. That's how God provides. Question is wisdom to use it, not to keep it. We don't keep. We use it for His glory, to meet needs. 
That's how it works. You see, that's how we see the connectedness. We take the trouble. We are all too familiar with speaking only to the small group of friends. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, we miss the point. We've got to go into the highways and the byways and bring the Lord people into the Lord's house. That's what we need to do. And we don't. We failed our mission already. Right? So we must ask ourselves, where is Bethel going next? You need other people who will serve the Lord. If for some reason something bad happens to Pastor Chris, illness, accidents, whatever, you are going to be caught in a bind. How are we going to run the church? We need more people, obviously. We have a team of people. And you know what? I have to stop other people from coming in because I have a whole lot of other people who want to serve the Lord and train. And they're all fine, outstanding young men. That's what Bethel needs. More people who will stand out and serve the Lord. We need them, and badly. The future. We need more people who are trained Sunday school teachers. We need more people who will know how to do evangelism effectively, share the gospel meaningfully. We need people to be prayer partners who will be committed to praying for people, for each other. You know what? We don't have them. And you know it. We can do much more. But first, it begins with, let me cultivate my faith, my knowledge, my wisdom, my understanding, my power. Then I can serve the Lord effectively. Otherwise, you're going to have a weak, strong church. It's more strong and weak at the same time. And that is not a great combination. Let's be there. Let's be there. Let's tell our people, would you be challenged to serve the Lord? Get your life in order. Get it straight. Serve the Lord. Prepare heart, mind. Let's go. We need that. Anything that has got no plans for the future is weak. This is where this is the future of Bethany. And I've got to do this before the Lord calls me home. So that when I'm done, I have a team of people. You know why a team? Because none of them have all my gifts combined. They have only in part. I write books, they can't. I do pioneer work, they can't. I do administration. A lot of this thing, financial work, they can't. I supervise churches all over. India, Myanmar, can't. So we need a team to take over one person's work. It's part of the planning. We have to. The session members will have to work together so that they form two parts, checks and balances. The support is outstanding. Absolutely. Easter Sunday, one offering, half a million dollars for ministry. So I'm not worried about the financial aspect. Right? So come Christmas, same thing will happen. Just two offerings will more than cover the whole year's expense. So I'm not worried about the finance part. I really am not. You know what I'm concerned about? People. What I'm concerned about? People with faith 
with love for God and His Word. That's what's missing. That's what's needed. And if we cannot be there, this is what people said. What's what William Carey said to the people? I'm going to India. Right? But it's like a dark mind. You are not able to go with me. Can you hold the ropes? Tie the rope onto me. I will go in. And so he went. And William Carey, three of his children, first one died. The wife's mind affected. Second one died. Wife mind further affected. Third one died. Her mind completely went insane. That was the price he had to pay to serve the Lord and open up the scriptures for the Indian brethren. There were people who hold the ropes. They did not support him the way they should. He kept on being lacking in so many things. Until the UK government said, we are going to create a special college to train Indian administrators who work in India from the UK. And they asked William Carey, we are going to make you professor of languages. And so he wrote back and he said, you know that I never went to college? Do you know I have a very basic education? I don't even have O-levels. But God had given him a special gift. He can speak and write in 20 different Indian dialects and languages fluently. None of the professors came close to where he was. That's how far apart he was. We want you to be there. We don't care about whether you got formal education. What you have in knowledge, understanding, in wisdom and gift, all the others can't even come close. So they paid him. And so he became a college professor, missionary, pastor, writer, translator. Where the ropes failed, God provided means of support. And so William Carey, instead of being supported, supported other people because of the professorship uh, that he had. Instead of being supported, he gave away half a million pounds in those days. One pound was six dollars. So that's a million dollars easily done. That's what we mean. So when God gives, we just use whatever God gives to us. The challenge is first to cultivate faith, knowledge of God's word, until this man was suitably gifted. He lost his wife and three children. That was the price he paid for India's success. That's what we need to have. That kind of faith, that kind of courage, that kind of sacrifice. We're so used to comfort zone in Australia. We don't even know how to sacrifice. We don't. Driving out of the house, ah, too lazy, lah. what for? Lah? What's wrong with us? We've got to get our act together. And the way is the way of cleansing, of cultivation, and of practice. Then God will do something even greater than what Bethel knows today. Bethel is not at its peak. There, is, there are a lot of things we can do yet for the Lord's work. That's the challenge. Can we do it? 
it will take faith, cultivation, practice. Otherwise, we've got nothing. Okay, think about this. And may God help us. Well, let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for the challenge to examine our hearts, our lives. We pray that you will encourage our hearts much. Lord, teach us how we can look into our lives and look at the areas which are missing and to desire very much that we be cleansed first and then, Lord, return to you and to seek your face, to cultivate our faith, our knowledge of your word and then to put them into good practice. We pray for your blessings on Bethel. We pray, Lord, that you will make this church great. We pray for your grace and your mercy, your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen.